Welcome to Red Rank Podcast. I'm your host, The Crow Show. So I just wanted to record a qu- kind of quick and dirty podcast just talking about the current state of Dead by Daylight in the Wesker era. Uh, talk about how to combat Wesker as survivor. Talk about some recent updates to my life in terms of content creation and just whatever else comes up. I'm kind of flying off the cuff with this one. We're trying something new. And from now on, just a quick announcement, I'm going to do my best to put these podcasts on video format on YouTube as well. The audio versions will still be available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, anywhere you download a podcast, be sure to check it out and rate my podcast. Uh, We're slowly climbing the ranks, and I really appreciate that. So let's get into it. All right, so this podcast episode, we might actually call it Wesker by Daylight, because that's essentially what Dead by Daylight is now. It's uh, every killer trying out Wesker. Basically, what happened is Wesker was very bugged when he first came out. His hitbox was too small, so killers were trying to use Wesker's power, but they were essentially just sliding off of survivors. It was not working the way it, it should be. So the first week is bugged. People were trying Wesker anyway. We all got RPD every single trial. It was so annoying. Now the map rotation is feels more normal, which is nice. But now we're on the second week of Wesker in Dead by Daylight, the Project W chapter. And <coughs> thankfully, excuse me, thankfully, behavior patched him. They, they completed a hot fix on Wesker. They increased his hitbox, I think, by five centimeters or something like that. I still don't know how it works. But Wesker feels a lot better now. He can land his secondary attack, which is really cool. Um, So now all the killers, they're they're testing Wesker. So survivors just playing against Wesker. It's getting kind of annoying. Tips on how to face Wesker if you're a survivor. Uh, He really struggles at tight loops. So if you're able to run around a rock, if you're able to run around a couple rocks, run through a pallet that's either safe or semi-safe, do some mind games there. He really struggles on tight little loops. So essentially anywhere in RPD, which is kind of ironic. It's kind of a trend in Dead by Daylight. Killers on their own maps are usually pretty bad on their own maps. I don't know why that is, (laughs) but that's the way it is. On the topic of maps, RPD does feel much better now that it's split into east and west. It's split into two maps. There are some strong loops, but overall, I got to say, it does feel a lot better than old RPD. If Behavior can do something about Dredge's awful, awful map, I'd be really thankful for that. (laughs) But uh, I don't think that'll happen anytime soon. You're playing, if you're a Survivor main, if you're only playing against Wesker, I don't know when it's going to stop, but if you're a killer and you are playing Wesker, for the sake of the survivors out there, I I consider maybe trying a different killer. That helps ease the pain of facing the same killer over and over and over again. And uh, (laughs) uh, tonight, I was streaming on Twitch. Uh, It's twitch.tv slash the crow show. And a lot of people in the Endgame chat were thanking me for not playing Wesker. <laughs> so use that information any way you want to. Let's let's change gears. Let's talk about some some meta stuff. We we talk about that a lot here. The meta has it changed? I think it has more or less. But the more it changes, the more it stays the same. Kinda in a way. <laughs> right now, what, what's happening is. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? The chicken being Gen Rush and the egg being Gen Slowdown. So what's happening right now is Rebecca Chambers has a perk called Hyper Focus, <coughs> which people are combining with stakeout and toolboxes, uh, as well as built to last, streetwise, resilience. And survivors using those combination of perks and items and add-ons 
they can fix a generator, which which normally I believe what is it, ninety seconds for or eighty seconds for a solo generator. One of the two. Um, they can essentially fix it by themselves in about forty five seconds, maybe fifty seconds. It's a tiny bit of RNG. There's a tiny bit of skill involved, but using hyper focus with stakeout, um, it allows survivors to fix gen super super fast. And I'm also seeing a really big rise in people using like Commodious Toolbox, which is the best toolbox for fixing generators really fast. And they're combining them with big charges uh, and brand new parts as well. Brand new part, you know, you hit a couple skill checks, get a big bonus to repair speed on gens. What's happening right now is killers are facing these. I I ran into a squad of four. All four of them had Commodious Toolbox. Two of them had Prove Thyself. Two of them had Circle of Healing. I think one of them had Hyper Focus with Resilience. And they all brought, <coughs> excuse me, they all brought Bloody Party Streamers. So they had every intention of just fixing gens and leaving immediately, like as fast as they could. Like, is that fun? And the funny thing is they brought bloody party streamers. So they wanted to fix gens really fast and then just leave. Swift squads like this survive with friends, usually people on comms grouping up with uh, coordinated attacks on gens or even just, you know, flashlight saves, whatever. Um I'm seeing a big rise of Swift squads running these Gen Rush builds. And to me, that's just kind of one of the most boring ways of playing this game. I've been trying to, like, because I'm a content creator, twitch.tv slash the Crow Show, Red Rank Podcast, TikTok, and now YouTube, I've been trying to change my mindset with how often I want to get in chases with the killer when I'm playing Survivor. And the game's a lot more fun when you're in chases. Let's, let's face it. If you're a survivor, it's a lot more fun to be chased by the killer. I know it's weird. But when you're hiding, being immersed, jumping in lockers, um, leaving gens early with sprint burst, it's just it's so boring. And the thing is, I mentioned earlier, I've been playing other killers other than Wesker. Uh, I've been trying killers like Blight, um, a lot of Billy, some Bubba. Uh, and Billy, when's, when's the last time you ever saw Billy in your game? Almost never. What's happening is survivors are just so happy to see a Billy because that means maybe one person gets in a chase, you get, you get one bad chase, and then all five generators get fixed in about five, six minutes. Billy is a very mobile killer. He can apply good map pressure, but I'm just learning Billy, right? I'm just, I'm learning, trying some cool plays. Even when I downed what felt like a lot of survivors in one trial, they ripped through the gens anyway. So it puts us in a really weird spot. And Oxdarva actually released a video about gen speeds right now. I believe he said gen speeds are a problem in Dead by Daylight, but what's the fix? They already extended generators by, I think, 10 seconds. I think it takes 10 seconds longer to fix it by yourself. I don't know what the solution is. I won't pretend to have the solution, but uh, after playing Killer, like Strictly Killer for the, the last two nights, I got to say it's very stressful because if you're not running some form of gen slowdown, like, you know, Pain Resonance, Corrupt Intervention, Eruption, Jolt. Hell, even Pop Goes the Weasel, I think, would be decent in the current meta. If you're not running some slowdown, your games will go super fast. And that's not fun for Killer. And when you're playing Survivor, are you really having fun when you're just fixing gens and that's it and leaving? Like, is I don't think that's fun. And if you're streaming on Twitch, that's not fun to watch. <laughs> so it's like chicken or the egg thing like okay well survivors they're running this gen rush stuff because they're running into nurses running four slowdowns they're they're running into 
you know, a nemesis running three slowdowns and slugging at five gens. And you'll get the rare killer like me who's like, I just want to work on chases. I want to learn mechanics for the killer I'm playing with. I'm going to try to get as many hooks as I can. And more often than not, I do quote unquote lose. I'll only get six, seven, eight hooks and all of them escape because I didn't hyper tunnel somebody out. I didn't proxy camp. I wasn't focusing on protecting my three gen. I got to, I got to patrol these last three generators and none. I just want to get in chases and, and have a good time. And I had a really good conversation with LA greaser. If you're on uh, YouTube or Spotify, uh, it's either going to be my last video or my last podcast. He really um, gave me some good ideas on how to approach Dead by Daylight. And just kind of reinforce my feelings on how boring this game is when all you do is fix generators and just leave. And I think I was in his live stream once. I think he mentioned something to the effect of how he doesn't like the, the term bully squad. And that Bully squad can apply to usually four survivors with, you know, flashlights and they're essentially uh, flashlights saving their fellow survivors, their teammates. They're usually on um, a Discord call, so they're on comms and they're, they're kind of bullying the killer. They become the killer, essentially. It's a different way to play. A lot of, Most killers don't like that, though. I used to be one of those killers. I used to get so annoyed. I'd be like, oh, man, it's one of those bully squads. I got to get them out. But the thing is, those squads, they're they are not fixing gens. They're just having fun. They're just trying to save each other as long as they can. And if you're a killer, you're, you're learning how to face them and uh, learning how to avoid a flashlight blind. Flashlight save, CJ, CJ tech, you know, locker tech. There's so many different techs against killer uh, survivors like that. Um, but again, like, do killers have to play into that? Do they have to play their style? Do survivors, by default, have to fix the generators right away and then just leave? No, the answer is no. And that's, I think, one of the big problems with this community. This community, I think, has everybody has different expectations for how this game is played. And they have different expectations for the outcomes and, and of course, the what it means to win in Dead by Daylight. What do you think is a win? One time, I, uh, I considered it a moral victory, but... I basically downed a downed a survivor inside the open exit gate when he was kind of styling on me. Carried him to a hook, put him on a hook, and I put it on TikTok. I was like, yo, that's a that's a victory right there. And somebody was in my comments, they're like, no, that's not a victory. You only got two kills. That's not a victory. How dare you use the word victory? <laughs> it's like it was a moral win for me, dude. I'll take it. But heaven forbid. If it's not a 3K or a 4K, it's not an actual win for Killer. And there are some people out there who will tell you, unless you get 10 hooks or more, it's not a win. But at the end of the day, it's dead by daylight. It's a casual game. Asymmetrical horror game. It's not meant to be fair. And there's no rule book for how to play this game. So it's an endless cycle do as killer do i run slow down or do i just want to chase people will survivors respect the fact that i'm not running slow down perks most of the time no most of the time those survivors don't respect it at all they're just happy to get out and teabag at the open exit gate while i'm running you know lethal pursuer barbecue and chili maybe some other random perk it's not even a slow down perk bamboozle usually I just want to chase people. I just want to interact with them and have fun. And But no, they'll, they'll op- op- teabag at the open exit gate, call me trash. And it's like they're running two or three proof thyself, brand new parts, 
commodious toolboxes, resilience. And it's just like, go off, queen. <laughs> you think fixing gins is fun. I don't. <laughs> So there you go. Chicken or the egg. What do you like to do? Do you like to gen rush? Do you like to get in chases with the killer? If you're a killer, do you do you have to go into the trial with three to four slowdowns? And is that fun for you? I find that when I get into those kinds of games as killer, it's not fun for me. I'm not having a good time when I'm running those that that amount of slowdowns. So those those are my two cents on that. Uh, Let's move on to the next subject. So things have been going really well on the content creation front. Uh, My podcast, Red Rank Podcast, I'm now posting uh, videos on my YouTube. So if you go to my uh, the description in this podcast, if you're listening on like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anything like that, there will be a link to my link tree. Uh, Please, I I urge you to go check out my YouTube. Uh, If you like watching my face while I do this podcast. You can do that on YouTube. Um, and the interviews, I'm going to do my best to do video interviews for each guest moving forward. I think it's just fun for y'all to be able to like see my expression, see the expression of the person I'm talking to, and just get that. That just gives you another way of connecting with me and the person who's my guest on Red Rank Podcast. Also, things have been going really well on the live streaming front. I got access to TikTok Live desktop. I might have to post so, some more info on that um, on a separate YouTube video. But essentially what it allows me to do is stream Dead by Daylight gameplay right from my PC right to TikTok Live. I don't have to like go live on my phone and point it at my monitor like some people have to at this point. I really wish TikTok Live desktop was available to everybody but it looks like it's a very limited thing. So I've been going live on TikTok and Twitch at the same time. We're allowed to do that. So people are noticing that I'm live on TikTok and they're coming to Twitch. And I'm getting a lot more followers on TikTok and Twitch. So it's just feeding into each other. And I think it's a beautiful thing. And I'm really looking forward to growing on both platforms and on YouTube and, of course, on the podcast. Uh, so yeah, things are going really well on the content creation aspect of things. And I have all of you to thank for that. You know, I do get some feedback on the, on this podcast, whether it's on my Twitch stream or my TikTok, private messages, people demand more content. So I'm going to do my best. I, I make no promises at this point. I work full time. I stream two, three nights a week. Um, I've got a wife, I got a cat friends, family, NFL starting up, European football is going. There's a lot going on in my life. (laughs) And I also do courier driving once in a while. Sometimes I'll do like Uber Eats deliveries and stuff like that. If you've been hanging out on the TikTok live or the Twitch streams, I really appreciate that. I I would love to see you there sometime. Uh, Just make sure you click the description in this podcast and uh, follow me on all the platforms you see there. Twitter, too. I post a lot on Twitter and Instagram. So uh, I would really appreciate if you check out all my platforms. And I'd really love to grow on Twitch. That's like the final frontier for me. Um, I've been doing this streaming thing for over four years now. And I've been doing the TikTok thing for about a year and three months. And, um, you know, I'm one of the last to the table when it comes to TikTok conversion to Twitch. But now that I'm live streaming on there, I've been seeing some good results. We've been getting new members to the community. And I really appreciate that. And uh, Discord, if you want to play with me, join the Discord. I'll be posting more often when when I'm playing off stream, because I do play this game off stream. I'm a weirdo like that. So if you want to check it out, please do. I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up there. This is just a quick and dirty video here. Just want to say hi to y'all. Let you know we're closing in on a really cool milestone. I forgot what. I think it's like 10,000 downloads on the podcast. Maybe 20K. I I can't remember. It's a big number, though. 
And please continue to rate the podcast on any platform you listen on. If you listen on Spotify, you do have to do it in your mobile app. You can't do it on desktop. It'll help us climb the ranks. And when you search Dead by Daylight in Spotify, all you see is like my episodes. And I love that. (laughs) I don't know what it's going to take to climb higher than... We got to number two at one point, but now we're down to number five again. I, I don't know. I don't know. But for me to reach even number two at one point, that's massive because I'm a small fry in the grand scheme of things. And um, the folks over at I'm All Ears podcast, they're, they're big boys. They're, they're big streamers, partnered streamers, stream to big audiences. And um, me, I've got a fraction of the reach. So to reach that number, that's huge. And I think it's a sign of things to come. Uh, here at the Crow Show and the Red Rank Podcast. So with that said, please, again, check the links in the description. Follow me on all platforms you have. And uh, let's keep this party going. I think my stream schedule will be like Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday. We'll see. Uh, But thanks very much for listening. And if you're on YouTube, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate it. Drop a comment. Let me know. Are you a killer main or are you a survivor main? And do you run slow down as killer? And when you're playing survivor, do you gen rush? Be honest. Don't lie to me. I'll know if you're lying. (laughs) So anyway, thank you very much for listening. And I hope to see you in the fog.